Hi there, on the bench today another thermal camera from Topdon. This one is the TC002C Duo. I did not pay for it, so I mark it as promotion, but as you know that doesn't stop me from giving you an unbiased review. In the box we have a nice pouch. And a quick start guide. The pouch has the camera. A lens cleaning cloth. A USB-C to Apple lightning cable. And a USB-C cable. This is what Topdon's website has to say about the TC002C Duo. The Duo part of the name reflects that it's compatible with either Android or iOS systems and there's also a Windows version of the software. I only looked at Android. 512 by 386 enhanced resolution. Hmm, apart from the spelling, this is the result of an image processing because the native resolution is half of these numbers or a quarter in terms of pixels. The field of view number already indicates the wide angle. This camera is meant for surveying homes, but not for electronic PCBs. A closer look at the specs. This lists the real IR camera resolution of 256 by 192 which isn't bad by itself, but half of what the first page seemed to promise. The net D or noise equivalent temperature difference of lower than 40 millikelvins is quite good, meaning the camera can detect fairly small temperature differences. As with all thermal cameras, the real-world accuracy depends on a lot of parameters being set correctly, namely the emissivity value of the object, the distance between the camera and the object, and the ambient temperature. Especially for wide-view cameras, if you survey, say, a room or an HVAC installation, it will see a couple of objects probably with quite different emissivity and at different distances, so the temperature values shown are to be taken with a grain of salt. But in general, instead of absolute values, one is more commonly interested in anything that's significantly hotter or colder than the rest. Topdown positions the TC002C Duo in the home inspection segment and not, for example, into the segment with cameras targeting mechanical or electrical work, like, for example, the TS001 I reviewed some time ago, or their other cameras for industrial or outdoor use. My review of the TS001 used version 3.72 of their app, but for this review I upgraded to the latest version 5.42. At the first start you have to agree to some terms of service and privacy policies. Normally I run this on a tablet that isn't on the network, so I did not check the details. You then have to give some permissions which make sense for a camera. This is followed by some guidance to set parameters right. As I mentioned, this is important to get accurate temperature values. This long-winded start happens only the first time and the modify parameter reminder can be set to not show again. You can always modify parameters while the camera is running. New compared to my previously reviewed app version is the AI detection part. Apart from that, there's very little difference between the version I reviewed in my TS001 video and so I'm not going over all this again. I will only show what's new. But first, what the TC002C Duo box did not contain is a camera mount. This here is the one that came with the TS001. And yes, if you happen to have one of these, the TC002C fits, but not very well. It's slightly thinner than the TS001, so it rattles and moves in the cage. I guess that could be fixed with some padding. If you want to use the phone camera together with the infrared, the two cameras must be as close as possible. In all my Android devices, the USB-C port is at the bottom and the camera at the top, so inserting the IR camera directly into the USB-C port is about the worst position possible. This is also true for both tablets I use, an old Samsung Galaxy and a Huawei. The built-in cameras are as far away from the USB-C port as possible. At least on a phone I could use the mount that came with the TS001 and the USB-C extension cable, but it's not much of a help here. In the top position it covers the phone's camera and there is no way to clip it down just below because the mount interferes with the power and volume buttons. 
halfway down is the best possible position and of course I can turn the IR camera in the mount so that the USB extension cable is not blocking the phone camera. You can compensate for that turn in the app so that the image from the IR camera and the phone camera are oriented the same way and aligned. Just keep in mind with the TC002C Duo you don't even get that mount. For example, the images are somewhat aligned so that the yellow IR heat signature of the radiator roughly aligns with the radiator seen by the phone camera. But when I turn to something much nearer like the desk lamp, it is no longer working because the closer the object, the more pronounced the difference between what the two cameras see. I can adjust again of course. I'm doing it very coarsely here because even with more care, the further away radiator is now out of alignment. Using transparency with cameras so far away from each other is just hopeless. It is not the fault of the TC002C or the TSC01, it's just a question of positioning the cameras. And maybe Top Down should come up with a better mount system. For sure, if you just plug any IR camera directly into the USB-C port, forget about transparency, at least with my phones and tablets. The wide angle of the TC002C Duo makes it suitable for large surveys, for example HVAC systems like this hot water tank. It works nice enough and it certainly indicates where more insulation would be beneficial. Swapping the camera to a TS001 and now I can't really see the whole system anymore. I have to kind of move the camera to scan the whole tank, but I get better details of individual elements. Using the TS001 for such things is not ideal because of its manual focus which means for any object with some depth like here some parts will always be out of focus. Heat loss surveys need much lower outside temperatures as we have now which is why I'm not including them in this video. But this entrance door shot with the TC002C Duo late at night gives at least some idea. The squarish bright thing on the door is a blank letterbox cover and it reflects the heat of the radiator like a mirror. This is using the TS001 from the same position. I can only see part of the door. In addition, the narrow focus makes the video rather jumpy, like shooting freehand with a zoom lens. A clear demonstration that the TC002C Duo is the better camera for this kind of work. But let's say you do want to use the TC002C Duo for electronics. How does it perform? I mounted it provisionally at pretty much the minimum distance of 20 cm, about 8 inches, determined by the app's parameter setting over a couple of power resistors set on a U-shaped aluminum frame that also serves as a heatsink. The camera is connected to a tablet running the app. You can see how small the image of the resistors is. It's the price you pay for a wide field of view. This is the video captured by the app. I would say it's usable but you will have some difficulty identifying close components. But here it serves very well to indicate a problem with my power resistor board. Basically the two bottom resistors have been heating up the whole aluminium frame as expected which in turn has heated up the other resistors mounted on the same heatsink and so they all show a slightly elevated temperature except for the one that is markedly colder than all the others even though it's being closest to the hot ones on the bottom row. It turns out that this resistor has lifted off the heatsink and is just hanging on its wires. Something I need to fix and it's not easy to detect with the eye but very easy with a thermal camera. You may be interested to see how the TS001 fares in the same scenario. I'm using the mount it came with and it's at the same distance to the yet unrepaired resistor board. And connected to the same app using the same tablet nearby. Compared to the TC002C Duo, now the picture of the board fills the whole frame. Of course, this also shows the problem with the unusual cold resistor. By the way, I did not mention this earlier for the TC002C Duo, which shows exactly the same effect. I mean, the heatsink is of course the same temperature as the top row resistors, passively heated by it, yet it shows it as a cold blue while the resistors are shown in a moderately warm orange. This is because the different emissivity of blank aluminium versus the darker aluminium cladding of the resistors. A typical problem of measuring temperatures of different materials with any thermal camera. 
If I half the distance to the resistors with the TC002C duo, the picture becomes blurry and the temperature values are all dodgy because the camera is closer than the minimum distance of 20 cm supported by the app. The TS001 can handle these distances easily and it delivers impressive close-ups of the solder joint of the wire connected in the middle of the resistor. But sadly, the accuracy of the temperature values are constrained by the same 20 cm minimum distance of the app. Speaking of the app, there is a new thing that I did not see before, which is trend chart. You can draw a line and the app plots the temperature along the line. So it's not a trend over time, but one over distance. If I increase the current, you see that the temperature changes, but the shape of the plot does not. Interestingly, this shows that the two resistors are on slightly different temperatures, even though they are normally the same value and are connected in parallel. The plot reveals that they have obviously not quite the same value. Well, they are, after all, just 5% tolerance part. The left one must have a slightly higher resistance value, thus getting a bit hotter than the other one. Continuing with the app features, the AI detection seems not to be free. You get 100 free detections. If that is something you want to try, I leave it to you. I decided not to pursue this any further. AI detection of house temperature leaks seems to be not yet available, or maybe that's because I didn't log in. Vehicle detection says this is a coil, or maybe that's the default, I'm not sure. There are plenty of other things. Again, I think the lack of anything happening is probably because of the missing login. What still works is temperature monitoring, but it's now part of the AI. I hope it stays available because this is really useful. It works the same way as it did when I tested it with a TSC01. You can select to monitor a dot, a line or a plane. For example, the simplest type, which is a dot, and after selecting the location in the image and hitting record, the app keeps track of the temperature over time. Because the graph autoscales, the first moments show what looks like disturbingly large variations, but that is because you basically zoomed all the way into a graph. As the recording progresses and after I change the current to cause a temperature increase, the display quickly zooms out and the white fluctuations from before shrink to just bumps on an almost straight line. Reducing the current is followed quickly by the temperature curve, now going downwards. Another way to normalize the display is manually zooming using two fingers. And at the end it still offers to save the finished recording as an Excel file, which is great. And by the way, the saving of an image as an Excel file of temperature values also still works. Both are very useful features. If you are on the lookout for a thermal camera to do surveys in buildings or heating systems, the TC002C Duo is a good fit. The wide field of view limits its usefulness for electronics and if that's your main use, the TS001 would be a better fit. But then you struggle with thermal surveys. The choice is yours. If you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe consider becoming a Patreon. That would really help this channel. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching.